Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be going over how to set a brooder box and this can be applied to chickens as well as quail and the reason I did this video is because chicks seem to be flying off shelves this year so I want to make sure that people who are getting chicks are informed and know how to care for the chicks in these early stages when they're really fragile. If this is your first time watching our channel, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe so you get notified whenever we have new videos come out. And if this isn't your first time, be sure if you aren't subscribed to subscribe because it really helps us out to grow. And if you want to leave a comment down below of videos you might be interested in so that way I know what videos to make in the future that might interest you. So what I'll be going over today is going to be things that can also be applied to quail and maybe a, even other birds. Um, quail and chickens are the only ones I've set up a brooder for, so I'm not familiar with the other ones. But it's pretty simple. Um, you pretty much do the same thing for quail. I have both of them in the same setup. The only thing I do different for the quail is I put stones down in their water. And sometimes I have a lower dish when I have the button quails because they're so small. And then with their feed, I'll also do like a shallow dish just to make sure that they can get into it. And then once you know that they can get into it and they're not gonna get wet, then you can remove the stones and then put the feed in a bigger feeder so that way it's a lot less maintenance and you don't have to fill it as often. For the most part though, everything is the same other than how you change your waters. And I can do another video on that as well um, just to show you how I have my quail pen set up. But other than that, let's get into it and show you how to set up a brooder. So what I do is I always start my chicks off in this, it's a big tub, I would say it's probably about like 30 by 48 and you can get it from Tractor Supply, I believe it was $80 um, and it holds quite a few chicks. Um, I normally get between 10 to 15. If you're going to get larger than that, you might want something bigger and then if you're getting something smaller than that, you may be able to go into something smaller as well. You don't need something quite this big. But this has worked really well. We've used it for multiple sets of chicks that we've had through here. We use it for our quail as well. Um, but so since this is a rubber thing, I always like to have an underlayment underneath their bedding just to make easy cleaning. So that way it's less time consuming to change out the bedding each week or whenever it's needed. So what I do recently has been taking puppy pads and lining that before I put the bedding in. And this, so that way you can just grab it. I was doing cardboard, but I felt like I was just wasting a lot. So I switched to puppy pads and it has been a life changer, super easy. The only thing is if you have a heat lamp, whatever you use for your bedding, just be very careful. I um, mean, we'll get more into the heat lamp and your different options, but be careful with whatever bedding you use or whatever underlayment you may use that the heat lamp won't melt it because the outside does get hot or make sure that it won't catch any of the material on fire. So after you have an underlayment, in, if you choose not to go to an underlayment, then you will put your pine shavings on the bottom. What I found is that for the first week or so, don't heavy coat the pine shavings just because you're gonna be changing it, they poop a lot. And so you're gonna be changing that flooring pretty constantly. And it's also easier on the feet to get used to that pine shaving material on the bottom of their feet. So I always do a small layer and I'll show you this kind of after I explain everything and I'll show you exactly how I set up my brooder. So you'll start with a thin layer of pine shavings and then now let's get into our heat lamps. So when you're getting chicks, which I have down in here right now, that have been shipped, you always wanna use a heat lamp just because their bodies have been absorbing all the nutrients and they've been cold. So the heat lamp is really the best option for shipped chicks. Now we can get into, if you incubate your own, I have another option as well that I actually switch them off in between. But since these guys were shipped, we'll be starting off with a heat lamp and getting them acclimated with this so that way they can get warm quicker. Whenever you use a heat lamp, you're always gonna want some type of thermometer. I love the digital ones because it's a little bit more accurate and we always have them laying around, but they do make some cheaper options. I believe that this one was only like $9 or so and the other ones are five. So it's a little bit more, but for me, it's a peace of mind because it tells me the exact digit I know kind of what the temperature is and I'm not guessing where the line is on it. So I make sure that the chickens are completely comfortable with the temperature that they are in. There is another option as well if you do not want to use the heat lamp 
and they have come out of an incubator or a farmer or someone and they haven't been shipped or if you've transitioned them from the heat lamp after about a week or so if they've been shipped in this is what i like to use um and it is a heat i don't know if you can see it it's a heat plate um and here let me get it closer and so with this heat plate you kind of adjust it so that way they go under it and it resembles a mother hen and it resembles how a mother hen would heat them and so i really like this the only thing with this one is they make some with covers and i would highly highly suggest getting them because as the chicks do start to fly they start pooping all over and everything so if you get a cover it kind of discourages that so you're not having to clean the top of this off as easy the way that this one works it's very easy to wipe off but this company does make one with a cover so i would recommend getting a cover if you go this option these are a lot cheaper on your electric bill and they're safer heat lamps just kind of freak me out there's so many things that can go wrong so i try not to use these unless you absolutely need to or in that transition period and as i set up this brooder i will show you how easy these are to assemble they're very easy. What I like to do with through the transition period is have a brooder and then also have this in there. So that way I know that they're staying warm, but then they're also getting used to this and knowing how to get in and get out while still making sure that they are at the right temperature. So after you have your heat set up, now you're gonna move on to your water and your feed. With your water and feed containers, I always just use kind of what's for the adults. Um, just because we have so many and our area is bigger, they do make smaller ones. Um, those ones you have to change up more frequently. And if you have a lot of chicks like I have, I would say anything over probably like 10. Um, I would go for these bigger options just to make sure that they're never out of food. They're never out of water. You still should be changing them regularly, but you want to make sure that they constantly have food and water. So those are the main things. So I just opt for these, make sure that they always have stuff on hand. And it's a little bit more peace of mind for me to know that they're not going to run out. I noticed with the smaller ones, when you have this many chicks, they run out very quickly and it's something you're doing like two to three times a day. So just go with those if you have more chicks. If not, the smaller options are great for you. As far as feed, I can show you which feed I use, but I do use the medicated and it's a little controversial, but that I've always had good luck with the medicated, so that's what I've stuck with. Um, you might have a different preference, but I just get it at Tractor Supply, that feed. You can also order it online. And then for their water, for the first week, um, really the first, I would say the first couple of days, especially when they're shipped in, I use Savichex and I use the probiotics and the electrolytes. And this is just to kind of help give them, boost their like, system up a little bit because they've just been shipped and stressed out. So I, those are the two things. They make different brands if you don't want to use Save a Chick, but these have been my go-to. I've hatched chicks for seven years and I've just loved using these. So I will go ahead and link everything down below that was used. Um, and if you have any questions about anything that's used or what you might be using, or even what kind of container you want to put yours in, be sure to leave a comment and I'll respond as soon as I can. Um, you definitely want to make sure as they get older, you put some sort of netting or some sort of protected over this, but make sure they're still getting airflow because they will start flying within a week or two of you having them shipped into you. So it's just something to be mindful of so you don't have chickens flying around and they're hard to catch once they do fly out. So that's really everything. If you have any questions about anything I went over or anything as you see me setting it up, be sure to leave a comment and I'll respond as soon as I can.
So for some reason, I lost the footage for setting up the rest of it. But what you do um, is all I had left to do was put the water and the feed in there. And so a little tick for the water is if you put a piece of plastic board or something that's not too tall, but will keep the water off of the bedding. This prevents the chicks from flinging any type of shavings or anything in their water and it keeps it clean for a lot longer. That's just something I've learned along the way. The food, they're going to get stuff in it, um, and I will eventually raise those as well. But when they're this young, they don't get as much as they do in the water. Something else to keep in mind is when they are day-old chicks for that first week, you're going to want to keep the temperature about 95 degrees. And then as they grow older, every week you can decrease that by 5 degrees. So you just want to make sure that their temperature is exactly where it needs to be. When setting it up for the first time, it's going to take a little bit for it to reach that 95 degrees. Mine, I believe, in this video was kind of sitting around 85. By the time that I finished this video and sat and watched them, it got up to the 95 degrees. But just make sure that it is reaching that 95 degree temperature so that way they're comfortable. I hope you enjoyed this video and were able to learn something through watching it. Be sure to subscribe and like our channel if you have not already. And thank you so much for watching.